Once upon a time, people believed that the earth was only 6,000 years old and that all animals were created with the earth and there was no change. But, as we will soon learn, this was way off. Many people began to challenge this idea and came up with new and innovative ideas. It all started with a man named Carlos Linnaeus and Erasmus Darwin. They both believed that life changed over time and that we are not static. Erasmus even suggested that we all came from the same ancestor. So anyway, along came George Louis Leclerc Comte de Buffon. Phew, that's a long name. <laughs> we'll just call him Buffon. Anyway, he studied animal body structures and found similarities between humans and apes. And he was like, could we have the same ancestor? So, time passed by until two scientists started collecting and studying fossils, paving the path for the field of paleontology. These two revolutionary scientists were Mary Anning and Georges Cuvier. Georges Cuvier also came up with a theory of catastrophism where he said natural disasters occur periodically, giving way for new species to just move in and take over the place. Okay, so on the side, this really cool man named James Hutton realized that the Earth's changes occur so slowly that it cannot be 6,000 years old. So, this really cool guy called Charles Lyell was like, that's a dope idea, Hutton and said catastrophism made no sense. He then came up with the theory of uniformitarianism. This basically said that slow and subtle changes over time create a substantial change that we could see. After this, a really slick man named Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was like, I'm actually gonna explain how evolution is done, boy. Lamarck thought about it and came up with this really cool idea, which was way off, but he didn't know that. He called his idea the inheritance of acquired characteristics. This basically said that traits can be acquired during an organism's life and can then be passed on to their offsprings. He also suggested the idea of use and disuse, which basically stated that organs not used by an organism will eventually disappear. Well, this was a swell idea, but then came the revolutionary English genius, Charles Darwin. Bleh. And he was like, step aside suckers and let me show you how science is actually done. Charles Darwin was an English naturalist and geologist best known for his contributions to the theory of evolution. In his early years, Darwin started off by studying to be a medical doctor, but the sight of blood made him sick. Later on, he followed his passion for nature and went on a voyage on the Beagle where he played the role of a naturalist. Over the course of the trip, Darwin collected a variety of natural specimens, and upon his return, he began to write up his findings in his journal. This was where Darwin began to develop a theory about the origin of living things and creating the theory of evolution. Darwin came up with the theory of natural selection and believed that organisms who were better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. He also established that more organisms are produced each generation than can survive, bringing into play another one of Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest. This theory stated that the organisms that are best adapted to their environment survived and reproduced, whereas those that couldn't died off. The theory of natural selection is a key concept in evolution. Natural selection is a process whereby organisms that are better adapted to their local environmental conditions will tend to have more surviving offspring due to alleles of heritable traits of survival that will then be passed on through many generations and will result in a change in the local population. The process of natural selection works best when there is diversity within the species. As well, natural selection occurs when there is a mutation or a trait that is proven to be beneficial to an individual in a specific environment, or this is otherwise known to be an adaptation. This adaptation can either be structural, behavioral, or physiological. These will create new alleles in the population, and since these uh, characteristics will aid the species in survival, it will become the more desirable mate when reproducing and will pass on their heritable traits of survival to the next generation, thus making a contribution to the gene pool in addition to increasing fitness in the population by producing offspring that will live long enough to reproduce. The theory of natural selection was first expounded by Charles Darwin in 1859. His theory was based on three observations, the struggle for existence, variation, and the roles of the environment. 
Moreover, his first observation of the struggle for existence is that organisms will produce more offspring than can survive, increasing the direct competition among individuals for limited resources, of which only a small number of them will thrive and reproduce. Subsequently, his observation was coined with the phrase, survival of the fittest, by John Spencer, which is an idea that organisms that are the most fittest will win the struggle for survival and produce the most offspring. Darwin was able to observe all these during his five-year voyage on the British survey ship, the HMS Beagle, as the ship's naturalist by keeping a fossil record of over 15,000 specimens. Natural selection works by a population having a wide range of phenotypes and genotypes. Selective forces such as competition and predation can affect a population. Since a single allele can produce a selective advantage to an organism, those individuals are more favorable than the rest. There are four types of natural selection that affect the frequency of heritable traits. They are stabilizing selection, directional selection, disruptive selection, and sexual selection. Stabilizing selection is a natural selection that causes an increase in genetic diversity and favors the most common phenotype. Thus, most traits do not change dramatically over time. Directional selection is a natural selection that favors the extreme phenotypes and causes the allele frequency to shift and favor the dominant alleles over the recessive ones. Disrupted or diversifying selection is a natural selection that favors the extreme phenotypes as well, but in this population it can cause for the elimination of the intermediate or common phenotypes. Sexual selection is a natural selection for mating. It is based on competition between males in which the females will make the choice of who they'll mate with. Um, therefore, overall, natural selection does lead to evolutionary change because it increases the frequency of the advantage traits that aid individuals in survival to be passed on to the next generation, resulting in change in the population. Clinton Richard Dawkins is an English ethiologist evolutionary biologist and writer born in Nairobi, British Kenya on March 26, 1941. Both his parents shared an interest in natural sciences and responded to Dawkins' questions in scientific terms. He is an old member of New College, Oxford, and was a professor in the University of Oxford for Public Understanding of Science from 1995 to 2008. He now holds a degree from zoology, as well as an MA and a PhD from the University of Oxford, where he was taught and supervised by Nobel Prize winning ethologist Nicholas Tinbergen. He lived in the U.S. for a few years, where he became a professor of zoology at the University of California, Berkeley, before becoming a professor at Oxford. Dawkins was a member of Christianity up until his mid-teenage years where he concluded that the theory of evolution was a much better explanation for life's complexity and stopped believing in God. In his scientific work, Dawkins is mostly recognized for his gene-centered improvement of Charles Darwin's theory on natural selection. He states that individual genes adapt and evolve rather than organisms in his The Selfish Gene Book of 1976. Darwin argued that each organism's body is just a survival machine for its gene and that adaption does not serve any selfless purpose. Although Dawkins is mostly famous for his significant scientific concept in the selfish gene theory, he is also very well known for his openly anti-religious views. Richard Dawkins believed that the theory of evolution and natural selection was a much better interpretation of life than God's intelligent design idea. In February 2012, Professor Dawkins identified himself as agnostic rather than an atheist in a debate with Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. He said that as a human, he cannot be certain that God does not exist, but he is only 0.1% away from completely rejecting the existence of God. Richard Dawkins also received many awards for his work as a prophilic writer. Among his most popular books are The Selfish Gene, which was translated into over 20 languages. The Blind Watchmaker, winner of the Royal Society of Literature Award and the Los Angeles Times Prize in 1987, and The God Delusion, which sold over 2 million copies in its English version alone.